great floss tube. It's Zoe. I am finally back for another floss tube. We've got this giant pile of mess to go through. Um, so let's get into it. Let me just move this out of the way then, and then we'll get into it. So it's been a while since my last floss tube video. Um, I've just been busy. I think probably it'll be the schedule through the end of the school year. Um, let's see, I last filmed it on, my last floss tube was on the 9th, Saturday the 9th. And today is Saturday, April 6th. So it's been almost a month since my last floss tube. And I think that's realistic through probably the end of the school year. Um, so this is my my mostly stitchy but general crafty planner that I use. It's a Hobonichi Day Free in the A6 size. Um, and I just keep track of what I stitch most days. Um, I do a pretty good job of writing it down. And I've been using some stickers to show this one indicates a new start. The check mark indicates a finish. Um, it just helps me kind of see what I've been working on. So anyway, this is what I'm used to organize my thinking and we'll go through, I guess, more or less chronologically what I've been working on since I last talked to you. Although the first thing I want to show you is something I actually haven't worked on since then, but I forgot to show you. So this was a, a finish from, um, I guess, February that I just never showed on here. Um, so this is a Mill Hill kit. Um, yeah, it's a seagull. I love him. I did not put the little charm on here. It was like a little star or something. I liked it better without it, so I didn't put it on there. This was my first Mill Hill kit, first experience with beading, um, and I just really love, I love this little guy. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do with him. I didn't put any felt or anything on the back yet, but um, he's cute. So there he is, wanted to show you. Um, so there's that guy. Editing Zoe here. I forgot to tell you, mentioned early in the video that I wanted to do my first giveaway. Um, I recently hit 100 subscribers, which small potatoes, sure, but it's still exciting. And so I thought I would celebrate by doing my first giveaway. Um, it's going to be these two patterns. I will tell you at the end of the video how to um, enter for this giveaway. So then, going back to the planner. So the day of the last floss tube, I stitched a little bit on Toy Shop. And you can see I did that a couple more days, including... Um, I noted that I finished all the cross-stitching of it on March 11th. So let me grab that. It's in this, in this little stack. This is it. Um, this is a Dimensions Gold Collection Petite. And um, I, so all the this, all this crosses or half crosses are done. There is still backstitching to go. So I think all the backstitching like in this section is finished and then across the top to about here is finished. And then I have to do all the backstitching in this area still. And I think I'm gonna, this is gonna be put away until um, probably November and then I'll pull it out and finish the backstitching then. I just don't have any desire to, to do it right now. And I wanna work on spring and then start thinking about summer projects and some other projects. So it's getting put away, which is why it is now out of the Q-snap. You can see I, um, talked about this when I first was setting this up, but I stitched just some batting scraps onto the edges because that was what enabled me to get the, the fabric into the Q-snap. I also surged the edges of the provided Ada um, to keep it from unraveling, but even with that, the, the kit didn't provide a whole lot of extra spacing on the Ada, so it, I needed more to get into the Q-snap. So that's this guy, done for now will be finally finished, fully finished, fully stitched, whatever, in um, in the winter time. I'll just toss everything over on the side. So that is Toy Shop. That brings us to mid-March, and I started, um, when I finished that, I started on Camper's Cabin. So I have a floss tube extra where I showed the unboxing of this. This is a Luca S kit, full coverage piece, Camper's Cabin. Finished piece is about 21 by 16 inches. Um, so that's what it looks like. Here is my working piece. You can see I've not gotten super duper far. I started top left up here. I'm using all the kit, everything. Um, started top left up here, and then I felt like starting on a different color area. So I counted my way down here on the um, gridded fabric and started with this color, and I haven't really done a lot since then. This is the biggest piece that I've worked on and the the that dimension is petite that I showed you is the only full coverage 
piece I've really done. So this is going to be a long project and I think kind of experimental. I have no desire to work on it, like on any schedule. Um, it's in this big Q-snap. I have it in my Lowry stand usually. And this is not even halfway from the top down. So to give you an idea. Um, so it's big in, big in. It's close to halfway, but it's not quite to halfway. So this is Camper's Cat. After that, oh, I did some work on Love Abide. So this is Love Abide. It's a lot of da pattern. Um, I ended up having to frog and restart this a bunch of times. And um, yeah, I kept, so originally, so here's my, here's my piece that I'm working on. Um, it's on 36 count linen, here's my little tag, 36 count flax linen um, with all the called four flosses. The first time I started it, I didn't center it well and I was gonna run out of space. So I had to frog it and restart it and, or no, the, well, yes, that was also true, but I also had to frog it another time because I didn't line up the two rows correctly. So that was annoying. So I had to frog more and restart. So this is the third start of this, and I've been looking at it recently because I've been doing a lot of smaller count pieces and questioning whether I want to continue on 36. But I don't want to start it again, so I am going to continue on the 36. So that is what it is. So this is where I am. Um, I think I was farther than this, maybe last time you saw it, but again, frogging, restarting, lots of times. So that is Love Abide from Letty Da. So I worked on that um, a bunch, but you can see uh, through, I got these cute little um, frog stickers. I didn't pay that close attention when I was putting these in, so they might not be on the exact right days, but I did have to frog a lot. Um, and that was a lot of my time on this one. So then I got annoyed with that after frogging and restarting all those times. Um, so I put it aside and I started next on a hedgerow. And you can see I worked exclusively on hedgerow from the 21st to the 24th when I finished it. Um, this is Hedgerow by Plum Street Samplers. And, whoa, whoa, I'm dropping things left and right. This is my finished piece. Super cute, I'm probably gonna make it into a little cushion. Um, I have a few things I need to make into cushions, so maybe one of these days soon I'll have a little cushion sewing fun and just knock all those out um yeah it was it was fun fairly quick little stitch um i used all the called for on this i don't have any idea what fabric this is i've done a really bad job keeping track of that recently it looks like it might be pick up the stuff that i have found on the floor and i dropped it looks like it might be darling david from those missing stitches but i'm not sure i think it's a 40 count so that is hedgerow and again, that was a nice, quick, fun little stitch. Some fun or easy fill in to do while doing some other stuff down there. Um, and then after that, I decided to pick up, I was feeling like working on a bunch of different stuff through, you can see like in the end of March, there's just a lot of things going on. Uh, I think I was feeling a little indecisive and wanted to try a bunch of stuff. So I picked up this, this is a Bothy Threads kit. Um, it's called Brookside. Um, started and finished this one real quick as well. It's pretty small. It was a really easy, quick little stitch. It was fun as well. Um, this is a fully finished, you can see. I just stretched it. I put some batting behind it and stretched it over stretcher bars. Um, I think these are five inch stretcher bars. And I did that on a recent other finish that I showed. And um, I just like it. It's cute. It's not, you know, my lineman's not perfect on the stretcher bars. I don't care. I'm just going to go up on the wall in the gallery wall with some other stuff and I think it's super cute. I have two more Bothy Threads kits that are about the same size as this so I'm excited to work on those too. They're a little they're um, boat focused so um, I'm gonna work on those probably leading up to the summertime but this was a quick fun little project. I used everything provided in the kit and then after that one I started a couple other projects. So I got some um, market orders in and I've started a couple of those. So I did work on Hedgehog and Hyacinth from the Blue Flower. This was a market pre-order. Um, and I ordered with it the, uh, I got the Cottage Garden threads, variegated threads for this one as well. You can see they're like very variegated. So those were fun to work with. 
Um, and this is my piece. Um, I think on Instagram I put the wrong fabric. I actually don't know what fabric this is. I believe it's a 40 count. But it's, I don't think it's the one I thought it was when I posted on Instagram. So I don't really know. But it's pretty. It's like a nice light blue. And this was another quick and fun one. The hardest part for me was like kind of being a little picky with where the coloring was and the flowers and in the hedgehog. And that was a little fiddly for me. And um, so I took some breaks from that. But it's another little cute one. Probably also going to make this into a cushion. I'll have my little pair of hedgehog cushions to go um, as a little display for spring. Super cute hedgehog and hyacinth from the blue flower. That was another one. And then, oh, I also, the same day, started this um, market pre-order, which is 12 Days of Christmas Stockings um, by Annie Belcher from Annie B's Folk Art. Um, I guess this came out as a, like, subscription series over time situation previously, but now it's out in this book. I'm trying to show you some more pictures to make sure I put, so I don't show you patterns. So it's really cute. So cute. Just these cute stockings. Um, so I got all the called for DMCs and the beads I ordered all from 123stitch and I stitched up the first stocking. Um, I'm using, I think it calls for, I'm using um, Ada, black Ada, but it's one size smaller than the color. Okay, so it calls for 14 count and I am using 16. And this is my first one. So my goal is to get all 12 done and fully finished before Christmas. And then I want to display them on our staircase and our entryway going up the stairs with some garland. I think that'll be really pretty. So this was like, and also a really quick fun one. It's fun to like the little bits that have beads and stuff. So this is the first of the 12 days of Christmas. Um, so I worked on this for uh, a couple days. It didn't take long to finish this one. And then, Okay, so yeah, I, I started those two on the 26th and finished them both on the 27th. So, real quick, oh, this was also the week of spring break. That's the other reason there's so much stuff in this. So I was off of work this week and was just sitting around, hang, well, you know, doing some other things, but I had a lot of time to sit and stitch. Um, so I started those two, finished them those two days. And then I started the Blue Flower Seasons of the Heart, the spring. So I showed you before, the finished stitching of the winter one and this is it this is how I'm gonna fully finish them so there's I got this wood it's supposed to be a, like a tray but it's a custom size that I had the the maker I'll put the name of the Etsy shop in the description um and I had her size it so that I could put these in it with this little gap around them and so I just it's not fully 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 finished so I just glued in the magnets onto this um, and I, and I pinned and laced this today, this morning, that was one of my morning projects, put this extra piece of like tag board on the back. Uh, and I did try gluing some washers on, but they weren't strong enough in terms of like magnetizing to the magnets on this backing. So I need to figure out something else for that. But my plan is that I'll be able to finish them all at the same size and then I'll just be able to swap them out and this will hang on the wall, um, like in our entryway. So that's how they will be all fully finished. So that's the winter one. And so I started the spring one. And this is how far I am on this. This is, they're both on 40 count. I'm gonna do them all on 40 count. So they're all roughly the same size using all the called for fabrics. This fabric, I had the tag right here, is 40 count picture of this plus murmur. And then these are the, the called for DMCs for this. So this has been a pretty quick one so far as well. I'm about halfway done, hoping to finish with this one pretty quickly and I can definitely get it laced and finished pretty quick. This is done, the way I did this was I put a layer of batting underneath on a piece of tag board just like this um, or like chipboard or whatever and then pinned and laced. And that's about it. So I'm gonna do this the same way and then I'll, I'll figure out the magnet situation so I can get them into the frame. So this is, again, Seasons of the Heart, Spring from the Blue Flower. There's that guy. Try and keep myself a little organized here as I move stuff around. All right, so I think everything, oh, no, I had one more thing that I started. Two more things that I started. So the same day, the next day after that, I worked on that some more. 
I put a few more stitches into Ann Campion, which is from Hands Across the Sea, I believe. And um, this I'm doing on 46 count linen. This is, I think this is white clay from Fox and Rabbit, 46 count. And I'm doing it using the 103 Alvera Soie Silk in 774. It's like a black. Um, and I just love it. This is fun. I don't do it, you know, as you can see, a lot of it at once because it's teeny tiny and, you know, I need good lighting and to want to think about it that way. But it is very fun and satisfying and I love how it looks. So I'm going to keep plugging away at this one as well and Campion. And I'll throw a picture up on the screen maybe like now to show you what it will look like when it's done. So I put a little bit of stitching into that guy. And the same day, it was baseball opening day, but the Phillies game, the Phillies opening got delayed because the weather's been horrendous around here. But that same Thursday, I started Painted Flowers by Shakespeare's Peddler. I got this as a kit from Number 12 Stitch Company. So it came with their fabric, which was 40 count Steely Nights. Um, and then they sent all the flosses to go with it. So they sent all the called for, but they subbed out the weeks for like a classics color, classic color works, I believe. Um, so this is, I've started this. I'm gonna finish it just like shown here. I love, I'm really loving this piece. This is, is a four, this is their 40 count. Um, it does, uh, it's, uh, since it's a hand dyed, you know, sometimes they like shrink in the um, dyeing process. And I, this one definitely did because those stitches are teeny tiny. I feel like it's more closer to a, almost like a 46 count. Like, comparing with the stitches in Anne Campion. Yeah, I feel like this is closer to a 46 count. I don't know if I can get it to focus. Um, but it's, I am really enjoying it. I love it. I think they're so cute and tiny. So this is where I am on this. Not super far. But this is a fun one. So excited to finish this one for spring as well. Um, these are all the flosses for this one. So this is a fun color palette. Very pretty. So that is... Painted Flowers by Shakespeare's Peddler. Um, and then worked a little bit more on Seasons of the Heart Spring. And then on Easter, I started another long dog. So I showed you not too long ago my finish of, why can't I think of the name? Oh, Having for These Times. And I started Two Men's Morris. And I'll throw a picture of, of what it will look like when it's done. And then this is where I am. So I did, I was still scarred from my experience with Love Abide and having to frog all that work because I didn't center it right. And this piece of fabric doesn't have a ton of side margin for this piece. This is a piece of 40 count sand dollar linen by Tropical Stitches. Um, and I'm using color and cotton stargazing for this, which is like a super pretty variegated dark blue. So, um, I started top center, worked my way to the top left because I really like starting top left. Um, sometimes I start in the center center, but for like smaller pieces, but for stuff like this, I like starting top left. So I worked my way to that top left corner, made sure I had enough margin, not a lot, but enough. And then I've been working my way. Oh, I, as I went, I couldn't resist putting these two little motifs in. And then I'm working on this corner, this flower right here. I'll kind of work my way from there. So this has been really fun. I'm using a single strand on this and it's just been a really fun stitch. I had a hard time stopping once I started it. Uh, I didn't intend to spend as much time as I did on the first like day that I was working on this and it's, it's hard to stop once I start. I've been watching baseball and putting a lot of stitches into this. So that is two men's Morris long dog samplers that I am working on. And then the only other thing that I'm actively working on that I wanted to show you going into April is I did put a little bit of time into tapestry. This is my oldest whip. Sorry, get an interruption. It's my oldest whip. I started it in May 2023. It has taken me a long time. I thought about maybe trying to get a schedule going kind of quarterly this year. Sorry, there's a needle minder on here. Um, but it's not going to happen. I'm just going to work on it when I feel like it and it'll get done when it gets done. So this is by Ink Circles. It is one of their patterns where it's like the four quadrants are the same. Why does this look like the margin is going to be so small? This is the middle. It's going to be fine. It's not going to be big. It'll be fine. Okay. Anyway. Um, <laughs> now I'm paranoid. 
about my margins. This is on Winter Moon, Edinburgh Linen, so it's a 40 count um, from Zweigart. And this top quadrant, quadrant, I can't even talk, this top quadrant right here is all finished. So this is the center and then this is the vertical center. So this is gonna repeat for the other quadrants. Um, the center sort of motif here, you can see is, is all done to these corners. And I'm now obviously working down in this quadrant. I was the other day trying to get my way to the bottom of this corner. Um, and then I was gonna fill in. So I'm gonna keep working on that. This one takes a long time, I feel like, because of all of the color changes, like all of these little segments of different colors, it just takes a while. Uh, so slow going, but still making some progress on tapestry. And then the other things that I wanted to show you, I showed you my finishing plans for the Seasons of the Heart. I have a little bit of haul that I want to show you. This is not everything that I purchased. Oh, I wanted to show you, I made myself a little finishing kit um, to try and encourage myself to do more finishing on a regular basis. Um, this whole, you know, I'll probably need to, Obviously, I'll need other stuff, but this is at least what I need to kind of work on stuff that I'm going to flat finish and or um, pin and lace, pin and lace, or use magnets on. So I've got a tapestry needle, I've got some cotton thread, I've got some glue, some different sizes of magnets, and the pins. And they're just all in this little organizer divided box. All right, a couple things that I've purchased. You know, all the interruptions today are real. Um, these are a couple things I ordered recently. I just wanted to share. It's not everything I've ordered because I have a... I order stuff when I want it. What can I say? This I thought was super cute. So together from Jeanette Douglas. I'm going to do this. This, what is it called for? Okay, what size? Fabrics. It doesn't say on that part. I don't want to open it up. Anyway, I'm going to do it on really, I think, small count fabric to make sure. It's, in, it's small in the picture because these are scissors. So I want it to, I, anyway, the point being, I want it to end up very small. Uh, and then I'm going to put it on the wall in this room, which is my sewing craft space with some other kind of sewing crafty projects that I have in the pipeline. And then I ordered this guy, which is um, another Jeanette Douglas budding bouquet number one, Autumn. I am not going to do the border on this. I'm just going to do the center piece and I'm putting to finish it on stretcher bars, just like the piece that I just showed you. Um, and I'd like to have some different season pieces that I can put in the same spot as this, but I don't like all the designs in this series. So I'm not totally sure what the plan is going to be for that yet. And then speaking of bouquets, florals, I got Emma McCarty, which I've had in my eye on for a pretty long time. This is from Needlework Press. Um, super pretty. Yeah, so I picked this one up. I'm gonna, I think I got, what did I get? Oh, I got the, the 103s for this. So I'll do this on a probably a 46 count fabric as well. And I wanna check out the sizes, um, the dimensions. When I do it on 46 count, I'm wondering if I can maybe get it the same approximate size as this, not the same size, but roughly, so that they can go in the same spot essentially and that the balance will work and the spacing will work. I think that's plausible. I do like there's a wintry version of this series that I do like. I just didn't order it yet because I need to stop ordering things advance of when I might possibly stitch them. So that's some plans for those. Those are going to go into my bins of projects. Another thing I'm planning to start soon is um, the Brenda Gervais Seasons of the Heart series, the spring version of that. I might start on the Drawn Thread Spring Garden. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that this spring or save it. The specialty stitches take a certain kind of frame of mind that I don't feel like I have at this moment. So that might wait. Um, so that's I think all the stitching that I wanted to show you. I feel like I went through that really rapid fire, but probably necessary with all the interruptions. It's Saturday. It's like midday, early afternoon. Everybody in my household is up around making noise. So all right, editing Zoe back again to tell you about this giveaway. So I'm going to give away these two patterns. Um, I showed my work on both of these in the video. So these are both patterns that I recently finished. So I want to um, kind of pay it forward and give away my copies of both of these. Um, so you're going to get this little hedgehog pair, Hedgerow from Plum Street Samplers, as well as Hedgehog and Hyacinth from the Blue Flower. 
Um, and I will include with this one, these two variegated flosses. So this is the cottage garden threads that make up the hedgehog's back as well as the flowers. I'm not gonna include the green variegated because that one I can see myself using more in the future, whereas these two I know I'm not gonna get a ton of use out of moving forward. So I'm happy to include these two in this giveaway. So this is what you'll get. In order to enter, please use the word hedgehog in your comment. Um, I would love if you would subscribe if you haven't already, but that's not a requirement. Just make sure that you are 18 years old, happy to send anywhere worldwide. And I'll pick someone who has the word hedgehog in their comment. To pick a um, I did wanna just show you a couple of stitching projects. Um, so I think I talked about this quilt before. This is a quilt that I'm working on for a friend who had um, a baby recently. Um, this is the Cara quilt is the pattern. Um, I'll put the intro in the description box. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this because, you know, it's a quilt, but it's, um, this is sort of the vibe. Um, it's got these solid pieces mixed in with this print. Um, hold it. So it's some different colors, super fun. It's a baby quilt, so like a plate mat size, so it's not huge. Um, so the top you can see is all pieced together. And, um, next I need to make my, my quilt sandwich. This is going to be, I think, the backing fabric that I'm going to use for it. And um, so I just need to get it sandwiched, quilted, which I think I'm going to try some free motion quilting on my straight stitch machine. I have a Juki TL2000. So I think I'm going to try, maybe try something new with the quilting with that, or I might just do diagonal um, straight stitch, like maybe inch and a half wide, two inch wide, um, diagonal lines. Undecided. I'll figure that out one as I sandwich it. So that's something I want to finish up pretty soon so I can give it to them. That baby's was born in October, so I gotta, gotta get moving on that. So I worked on that, um, got that piecing done, and then I just started trying out making I guess the like brand version of this is unpaper towels, but it's like just cheapo flannel fabric. Um, and we're gonna try using them in the kitchen to replace at least some of our paper towel usage because with two teenage boys and two adults, it just feels really wasteful and unnecessary. So I ordered this um, flannel from online. Oh, I think it's from Fabric Direct, Fabric Wholesale Direct, something like that. Um, and just chopped it up into roughly the same size pieces, nothing too fancy. And then um, I got this fun kind of aqua colored, turquoise colored, whatever, serger thread recently. Um, Cause I thought it'd be fun when I surged the edges of my cross stitch pieces to have some fun bright color. So I got this and I got a bright pink, um, but the it turned out that this color was kind of fun with this fabric. So I've been, slowly working my way through surging um, the edges of this and then we'll try them out and see. So that's been just like a fun, easy, quick little project. I didn't pre-wash this. Usually I would pre-wash a fabric like if I was making apparel or garments, I would pre-wash the fabric. Um, and I know that this will shrink and probably warp a little bit, but I don't care because it's for paper towels, essentially, paper towel replacements. Um, and I, I felt like it was going to be easier to cut them and surge them before dealing with that shrinkage and then deal with it after I put them through the washer and dryer, then do a wash and dry first and deal with it. I don't know, it doesn't, probably doesn't matter either way, but in case you were wondering, I just received the fabric, rough cut it into approximate sizes. They're not all the same size. Again, for the purpose, doesn't matter. And then ran it through the serger uh, without a whole lot of attention to detail, just to kind of um, curve the edges, the corners a little bit and so that, that's another little sewing project I've been working on. And I think that's that's for real all I've got for you. So I hope you're having a great weekend. I hope you are getting some stitching in. I hope all is well in your world. And I will probably see you in about three to four weeks for another update on where I am in this mess, mess of projects. Um, and so yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for hanging out, bye.